So your fear is always about that which does not exist. As Helen Keller said, avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. The fearful are caught as often as the bold. So if you know that you're at risk no matter what you do, then you might as well be one of the bold because the bold are the ones that get the thing that they're putting themselves at risk for. But if you're being timid, if you're standing back and you're still likely to get caught, called out, lose, fail, be embarrassed, and you don't have the potential upside, then there's no advantage to being in that state. Fear begets fear. The more that you give into that, the less that you're willing to be bold, the less that you're willing to step out. Every moment that you spend hidden, pulled back in, afraid, that fear begins to magnify. That fear begins to feed itself. It gets in a loop. And that's when it becomes this indomitable force. And then suddenly the very thing that you're fighting against is simply the overwhelming amount of fear, which never would have become overwhelming if you had simply acted as if you were bold. At some point, that's it. You just have to strike. You just have to get up and take action. And it isn't that either one is safe. I'm not saying that being bold won't come with its price. It will. And that price may be extraordinary, but it will be no more extraordinary. In fact, I'll say it will be less than if you allow the fear to feed on itself. Because just as the fear begins to reinforce, being bold begins to reinforce. One bold move stacks on the next and suddenly, as your life progresses and you try more things and you fail and you learn and you get up and you grow stronger, you look back on your life. And even just 10 years ago, you can't recognize who you are. That is the process of taking risk. That's the benefit of being bold and striking out. You will adapt. You will grow in either direction. Do you want to adapt to fear? Or do you want to adapt to growth, to change, to pursuit? to being bold. And as Marie Curie said, we must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing, at whatever cost, must be attained. And that's how you get bold. That's how you take that first move. You choose to believe that in you is the ability to do something. And even if the only ability you can allow yourself to believe in is that you can learn, that's enough. That's enough to give you the impetus to take that first step, to say, I don't know this now, but I can learn this, and I'm going to take that first terrifying step in the knowledge that it's the step that educates, and that one step teaches me something that allows me to take step two, and then three, and so on and so forth. And sometimes there might be something even more. You might recognize in you something that you're already good at, something that you can build on, a strength that you can begin to magnify and go out. But that's where all of your energy should be on, the things that you can do, you can learn, you are good at, you're willing to go and push yourself to grow and get better at that thing. Put all of your energy there. Don't spend your time thinking about what might go wrong. Instead, think about why it must happen. Why does it matter to you? Why do you care enough to put yourself through this? Why are you stepping out? Why are you being bold? What is it that matters to you? Once you have that thing, that is the one gift. If I could just give, I would give, but I can't. It must be earned. You have to earn what you want. You have to know what it is. You have to do the work to find that thing, that interest, to turn it into a raging inferno of must have that thing that at no matter the cost, you're going to attain. When you have that, you will find all of a sudden actions are easy. What becomes hard is stopping yourself. So put yourself in that position where momentum is the default. You will always be left with what you came here with, which is the passionate blueprint of your authentic self-expression found in your heart, my man. That is the journey. The journey isn't to stack your bank account or to stack toys. That's the lie. That's what we've been fed. That's what we've been told. That is a byproduct of one of two things. 
either lying to yourself and lying to the world and sacrificing your soul so that you can have those things hoping that they will bring you joy and pleasure or living authentically. And when you live authentically, those things will either be added to you because that's a part of your path or they won't. And you gotta be okay with that because if you're focused on the outcome rather than the journey, rather than the art, rather than the self-expression, the poetry, the authoring of your own life, being the authority of your own life. So you made your bed, now you gotta sleep in it. Just be okay with that. Take responsibility for that. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Feel empowered by the fact that you are a creator in your life. You're a manifester of circumstances. You did something and you made something happen. Every moment comes with its yin and yang. Every moment comes with its light and dark. Every moment comes with its good and evil. The idea is to be fully present in the moment so that you can experience it all in its rawness, in its intensity, in its purpose. Each moment, its purpose is itself. We're not needing to do anything more. We're needing to get out of the way and let our truth shine through. Always go to virtues, always go to character, always go to who you're not being or who you're being. When you're ready to be great, greatness shows up in front of your eyes. Open up to your intuition, open up to your higher consciousness, open up to your truth and stop letting fear-based consciousness based on past shit keep you stuck, bro. You gotta breathe. happening in your legs as you rep out one more squat because it'll be all the more pleasurable when you reach the inevitable other end of the spectrum where you're laying in your hammock sipping on a protein shake boy I really went hard I really went hard on that set I really went hard in that relationship I really went hard in school I really went hard in my career I really went hard in life go hard I want to feel life. That's why I'm not afraid of pain. That's why I'm not afraid to take risks. Because I'm crazy about life. I love the rain. I love the elements. I love the way it feels on my body, man. When I see people afraid of the rain, I say, boy, you're afraid of life. There is a self-destructive side of yourself. There is a self-destructive side to every single one of us. You can't be here without a shadow. There is no light without shadow. There is no being without shadow. There is no day without night. The self-destructive side of yourself is just as important and intricate to your wholeness as your seemingly more positive or resourceful side. Successful people don't make the right decisions. They make all kinds of bad decisions because successful people have shadows too. The difference between successful people and others is that successful people make their decisions right. And making your decision right begins with taking full responsibility, ownership, and loving your destructive side, your shadow side. Making the right decision isn't about fixing yourself or remedying the problem. It is about self-acceptance first. When you can fully accept your shadow and all the things in them, they no longer manipulate you from the dark side, from your ignorance, from your unconscious. When I make this decision and I get this result, what is God trying to show me? What is my inner being trying to reveal to me? What part of myself have I denied and now is manipulating me from the underworld? Your shadows, your destructive side, those things that you have shoved down in your deep, dark unconscious, oftentimes contain the greatest gifts you've been given. You think yourself as a loser. You really do, that's why you can't win. 
<laughs> oh, I don't feel so good today. Get your lazy, sick ass up out of bed. Take those very things that you've been resisting. Look at them, question them, look at them from multiple different angles. And then integrate it into your wisdom, into your being. Knowing thyself is first, foremost, primary, foundational, and means way more than anything else. Indulge in the pain. Feel the pain. If you've got a broken ankle, just feel the fucking pain. When you're working out and you just like, you want to die. Feel the death happening in you. You're going to be living as a shell of yourself. It might be a shiny, flashy, expensive shell, but just a shell, my friend. If you're being yourself and being your truth, you have no desire to push anybody else off of their truth or try to bring them onto your truth with your righteousness. Every single limitation that you have is designed to make you a bit stronger, either by teaching you how to move over, around, or through a brick wall, or shedding light, becoming enlightened about your shadows. You want to be, live a big game, you got to figure yourself out and you got to start dealing with yourself objectively. If you know you're fearful, get very clear about what you're fearful about, why you're making choices in your life based on that fear, and then face that fear. It is never our job to get anyone else to believe in, trust, or accept our stance. It's never our job to be right. It is always our job to be true. Love your destructive side. Accept your destructive side. Remember that it is equal in part to your light side and it will always be there. Now we live in a world that causes us, forces us, conditions us to look outside ourselves for answers. This is normal and natural based on the conditioning we've received. Meaning that where I stand is never good enough because I need reference for that to be validated. I need, like you say, relationships, friends, family, school, and work. I need other people, other circumstances, other reflections to show me my worth. This is the fall of man. This is where we lose ourselves, and this is where we get knocked off of our ground, my man. If those bad memories come and you notice that and anxiety rises in your belly and chest, then the time is now to do something physically to expel it, to exercise it. When you see greatness in anyone, what you're seeing is your own self power personified right before your eyes. I am you, you are me, together we rise. It doesn't matter if the world is crumbling down around you. It doesn't matter what's happening. You gotta look outside the box. Where are the warriors that say, I'm gonna make a decision and I'm keeping it. Devotion, discipline. Devote yourself to something bigger. Be decisive about what you're gonna do. Say, I'm gonna do it and that's it and then be disciplined about getting it done every single day whether you feel like it or not. There comes a time in life, more often than not for most of you, where you've got to deal with pain. With tough times. With heartache. These times are designed to make or break you. When something bad happens in life, our common response is to ask questions like, why me? Why do bad things always happen to good people? Now I'd love to tell you that pain won't come in your life, but I can't. I'd love to tell you that you can go through life without disappointment, but I can't. Now I'd love to tell you that you'll go through life without any heartache, but I can't. 
Just know that if you hold your ground and push through pain, you will become stronger. Diamonds ain't formed on soft sandy beach somewhere. They're formed in the toughest, most intense, most dangerous place on earth. Under pressure that you couldn't even imagine. Under tension, under pain. This is where diamonds are formed. All life demands struggle. Most people think life comes with privileges, not problems. Promises, not pain. But those who have everything given to them don't appreciate shit. They become lazy, selfish to the real values in life. The hard work and the struggle that you face now is the main ingredient for who you'll become tomorrow. How can we appreciate success and happiness if we've never had pain? Every single struggle makes you better. All the tough times make you stronger. Every time you get knocked down, it lets you climb a little higher next time. What are you gonna do when you go through pain? Because how pain changes you is up to you. We all experience pain. My challenge to you is to not just go through pain, but grow through it. Pain is there to make you better. Without struggle, there can be no victory. And let me tell you, when you've been through pain, when you've fought for where you are, you ain't gonna let anyone take away what you got. When you've earned it and paid your dues and suffered and failed, been hurt and been down, and you get back up. When pain and struggle comes to face you again, you look it in the face and stand it down. Because you've been through too much. You're too strong now. Everything that has happened to you up until this point has made you who you are. And it will continue to mold you into who you will be. All pain, all the sacrifice, all the heartache, all the criticism is always going to be there. But you've got to go through it. You've got to go out and you've got to make moves to make change. Believe you can. Tell yourself you're the person you want to be. And even though from an outside perspective you ain't, just believe it. This will fill you with confidence and you'll start carrying yourself differently. You'll start looking at the world differently. You'll start talking differently, walking differently. Because you ain't no longer the person you are. You're the person you've always wanted to be. But you've got to believe in you. So believe. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to spend more time with my family. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to leave this abusive relationship. So why is it, come February, we're back doing the same old shit, making the same mistakes, hanging around with the same old people, doing the same bad habits, making the same excuses? This happens every single year, and I'm telling you now, if you don't want to fall into the same old trap that you do every year, then you need to change something else before all that other shit that you put on your resolution list. You need to change your mind. You need to change the way you think, the way you look at the world, the way you look at problems. You've got to change what you believe is possible. Without the correct mindset and belief about what you're capable of or what you'll have, you'll have no chance of following through on any of your New Year's resolutions. This year will be the same as last year if you don't change your mind. This will be your year. Don't let what's happened to you up until this point define what happens from this point on. All the shit that you've been through in life, all the pain, all the darkness. You have the power to change it from this day forward, but you have to change your mind. Let this be the year where you get up off the ground, out the dirt. Let this be the year that you get the passion for life that you've never had before. A year like no other, but a new year means nothing without a new mind. 
If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. If you've still got that shit in your head, you're gonna have shit in your life. If you've still got that hate in your mind, you're still gonna have hate in your life. All that's gonna be different is you're gonna have a new calendar to work on all that hate and shit that you did last year. You're still gonna be lazy. You're still gonna be hateful. You're still gonna be fat. You're still gonna be jealous. You're still gonna be insecure. You're still gonna be hating on people. But if you say without a shadow of a doubt that that's it, I'm done. I'm gonna change because I have to. Because life depends on it. When that clock strikes 12, you'll make the change and stick to it. This is your year. All you've got to do is get in the right frame of mind. This is your year to get healthy. This is your year to meet that person of your dreams. This is your year to get in shape. Your year to go further in your career. Your year to break free from depression. This is your year to chase your dreams. Change the way you think. And this year, you'll transform the rest of your life. What's your greatest fear? Fear is a part of life, it's a constant. Just like the air that you breathe or the beat of your heart, it's always gonna be there. Like a big shadow following you around every time you wanna try something new. Start a new job, meet new people, it's gonna be there, whispering in your ear, lying to you about what might happen if you do this new thing. The question is, are you gonna let it control you or are you gonna control it? Because let me tell you, if you don't keep fear in check, it will consume you. It will slowly but surely start breaking you down piece by piece, stripping away everything that's good inside you. All the imagination, all the adventure, spontaneity, all the stuff that was inside you as a kid will be buried in the shadow of fear. Don't let it. Don't let the fear of failing or f***ing up stop you from being who you want to be, doing what you want to do, seeing what you want to see. Just do it, man. Remember, you can fail in life at something you hate, so you might as well try to do something you love. The more times you challenge yourself, the more times you venture into the unknown, the more times you push through the fear, the stronger you become, and the more fear starts fearing you. You're a force to be reckoned with. How are you gonna let fear control your life? You're stronger than that, come on. You've got everything you need inside you to achieve anything. And you're gonna let fear dictate what you do? You run from your fears, you ain't living. You're alive, but you ain't living. What was I scared of? What else can I do? What else am I capable of? What else can I overcome? And if you fail the first time, you get back up and you go again. You're unstoppable. If you don't do it the first time, at least you try it. And until you start believing different, nothing's ever gonna change. You have to first see it in your mind, that place where you wanna be. You have to picture yourself there. Wherever it is, you've gotta picture yourself there. All right, the next step is you've gotta believe it. You have to believe it almost like an insane person, that you can do it. And some people will actually think you're insane. And I tried is a lot fucking better than what if. Because what if has nothing but regrets at the end of the day? And that is the only fear that you're allowed to fear. Having regrets. But you've got to believe in you. So believe. <laughs>